With the surge in development of high-rise units over the last decade, there has also been a great increase in the problems related to leaking and leaching of balconies. The most common cause of leaking in and around balconies is overflow of the perimeter detailing. This leads to substantial damage to interiors and expensive repairs involving removal of balcony surfaces and demolition of sliding doors and balustrades. This overflow problem is primarily a design issue, so this episode discusses the essential design elements necessary to prevent the problem occurring in the first place. Now, just like in boats, overflow of water at balcony perimeters is prevented by ensuring good, clear freeboard at the interface with the water source. Freeboard is the distance from where water collects to where it can overflow and cause damage to interiors or finishes. This distance is important as it allows a margin for peak rain and wind events which are likely to push water inside. Clear freeboard is also important for allowing door frames and adjacent flashings to drain externally, otherwise they simply back up and drain internally. While sliding door frames are often the most obvious point of overflow, the same issue of freeboard height applies to perimeter detailing at balustrade walls and panels adjacent to doors. So how much freeboard is enough? Well, the Australian standard, called Waterproofing Membrane Systems for Above Ground, is a good place to start in determining the height required. It refers to freeboard as vertical height and requires a minimum of 70 millimetres. But some exposed situations require up to 100 millimetre minimum height. This is effectively the clear vertical height from the surface from where water collects, such as at the top of tiles, to the top of the waterproofing membrane. Most importantly, the freeboard should be achieved by an integral or monolithic set down in the structural slab and not a hob attached to a flat plate slab. In this way, the structural concrete profile is used as the primary water shedding protection, deflecting water away from the interior. The concept of primary water shedding, using fundamentals such as concrete slab profile, flashings and gravity, is discussed in more detail in another episode of Building Blocks. This solution also relies on the extra height achieved by having the waterproofing membrane return at the back of the door sill. In this location, the membrane is not subject to the differential movement, which often leads to membrane failure, and the top edge is protected against overflow of water. Now, achieving this height in practice is not a simple task, due to the competing demands of each of the participants in the design and building process. The pull and push of the design process often looks something like this. The architect wants as small a step from inside to outside as possible. The developer wants the smallest possible floor to ceiling heights so that he can fit in more floors. The concreter wants a nice flat slab for the helicopter finish. And the builder, well, he wants no delays and no extra costs. So it all ends up with little or no freeboard so that the water enters freely. Such situations lead to millions of dollars of repairs right across the industry. Now with a little extra planning, freeboard can be achieved, but it starts with three basic design principles common to all situations. Firstly, the structural engineer should allow for a minimum 1 in 80 fall in the structural slab, and the architect must make sure to include that in his drawings. Good falls in the structural slab are essential for achieving clear freeboard and preventing overflow. The slab acts as the primary conduit of subsurface water, shedding the bulk of it into the drainage system before it has a chance to build up. It's also critical that adequate drainage is provided to the balconies so that the water can get away easily in a peak storm event. Now having good falls in the structural slab has the added benefit of enabling the tiler to achieve a single thickness of bed. A reinforced mortar bed of 40 millimetres minimum can simply be applied over the full balcony surface. This is much easier than trying to achieve the correct falls in the tile bedding mortar by hand. Secondly, determine the set down or step needed in the structural slab. One way to work this out is to work back from a flat slab profile. So, for a conventional tile on mortar bed finish, you'll need to drop 10 millimetres for the tile and glue, drop 40 millimetres for the mortar bed, 
drop 50 millimeters for clear freeboard at the front. Then ensure the membrane turns up 50 millimeters at the back of the door frame. And there you have it, 100 millimeter clear freeboard. Thirdly, it is critical that the top edge of the membrane at the balcony perimeter is protected from water overflow. This means ensuring the membrane is also protected by flashings or reglets around the balcony perimeter. Now a note on best practice. The best way of providing plenty of freeboard, good accessibility and a great look is to use pavers on support pads or timber decking as the balcony finish rather than tile on mortar. The clear drainage under these systems mean you can reduce the set down height in the slab and still have a level transition from inside to outside. Complex waterproofing problems such as these are significantly reduced by going back to sound design principles. These principles have stood the test of time and tide. They just need to be remembered well before the concrete trucks arrive. <laughs>